Here's a cowboy show, they call it. We've, they take the horses out and they try to get these balloons hanging out there. Let's go have a look. Got every one of them. That is impressive. Beautiful animals, those horses. All right. Twenty zero three. Close enough. That was Annie Oakley, ladies and gentlemen. Just kidding. This is the Hewlett House, restored to 1840. And this is one I, I haven't seen open before either, so I'm gonna check it out. From the period, not the family. See, in this house, only some of the artwork belong to the family. Like, take note of all the portraits of the father, because they're all different. Okay. On the south wall, you get a view of that from the kitchen. When you look this way, it's Charles Wood's portrait. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Hello, how are you today? Good. I, I've, this has always been closed every time I've been yes, here. Yes, I know, time. <laughs> I know. They mentioned the same cool. thing, too. Have you, have you ever seen it before? Or? No. No. I can tell you a little bit about it. Sure. And then you can kind of go through it on your own. It's from Woodbury, and it's uh, the home of Charles Hewlett. Mm -hmm. He is a wealthy gentleman farmer. He had a 130-acre farm in Woodbury. He also fought in the Revolutionary War oh, wow. on the British side, so the, oh, it is the loyalist. home of a loyalist. Yeah. Um, although the house was built in 1794, it's restored to 1840. Uh -huh. He dies around 1801, so in 1840, his oldest son, Lewis, is living here. Hmm. And uh, Lewis actually raised his family. By 1840, Lewis himself is an older man. He's about 70. He's a widower. His children are grown and living on their own. He's living in this house with a younger sister, Hannah, who never married, and five African-American farm laborers. So a little bit about the house before you go through it. The yeah. upstairs is closed off, but there are three bedrooms. The master bedroom is directly above the parlor, and it's the same size as the parlor. So when you see the size of the parlor, you can yeah. see that it was a pretty luxurious home. I just mentioned to them that the portraits on the walls in there are Hewlett's, so yeah, that's, those are family, cool. heir, family heirlooms that were given to Nassau County when the house was set up. So you got a parlor, then you have a sitting room, there's a little mud room in the back of the sitting room, then you're going to go into the dining room next, and then you'll be headed towards the kitchen. Now before you get into the kitchen, there's a cold cellar on your left where they would store food and a small pantry. The kitchen reflects the older time period. The rest of the house is restored to 1840, but the kitchen was left the way it looked in 1794. Well, cool, thank right. you. You're welcome. Secretary desk. Nice old map. The 
mud room. Alexander Hamilton, I think they made a play about him. Okay, that was me. Get those apples. Another view of the parlor. Um, I'm sure they, they do something. It's up there. It's like this was like restored to the 1790s. It's a butter churn. This is probably very dark in here. Where would they find it? Here's some nice pottery. Stairs, I can't see it, but I'll raise it some. I have to look at that later to see it myself. Here's where they would bake stuff. Chop wood. Just something that was a very routine task for people in the 19th century that we don't really have experience with now. Cool. New experience. This is the Lawrence house set to 1820. Not open though. This is the Conklin house from 1853. He was a a whaler and he lived on the by the coast obviously it's pretty cool but not open at the moment here's an outhouse from the 19th century oh very messy business but hey you can fit three at a time so you'd have company. Here's some more pictures of Powell inside the little uh, entrance area to the village. This was the guy whose farm was originally uh, was the whole property. Here he is again. He's a Quaker. This was a lady that owned Powell. That was the, okay. That was his wife, I think. I don't know. Wow, look at that. Here's before the restoration, what it looked like. A little different. <laughs> Took a little work, I'm sure. Here's the front. 1898. Um, 1900. 1915. Well, it is pretty neat. Here's some old toys. Fish pond game. Doesn't say what year it's from. But you get a little stick here and you pick out the fish. <laughs> that is pretty neat. Fish pond. Here's another old game Christmas Goose. Looks like a lot of fun.
Here's a facsimile of the whole property, in case you were wondering. And that will do it for this video from the old pa Bethpage Village Restoration. Our history comes alive. Didn't get to see all the houses. Some of them were closed, but uh, nearly all of them at least got an image. So you see what it looks like from the outside. But otherwise, it's pretty interesting stuff. Always is. Continuing the day as that 1830s guy instead of 1930s were at the Long Island Carriage Museum. Gonna look at some old carriages, mostly from the 19th century. Let's take a look. So Wells Fargo coach. Check it out. That's look at these wheels. It's huge. Here's a wagon, market wagon. 1900. Now things like this were still used well into the 20th century. So it's almost a 1930s thing. There are probably some in more rural areas being used. Studebaker, you know, they made cars later on. It's like their junior express wagon. <laughs> sure. Uh, a lot of kids in the early 20th century would have wanted this for either their birthday or Christmas. Wow. Now this looks comfortable. Here we have a giant omnibus. Look at that, about 1880. And this was used like this with a team of horses. It's very heavy, it carried a lot of people. That's where they got the word bus from. Give you a close look here. Here's an old Conestoga wagon. Oregon Trail type. Meant to hold a lot of storage and be sturdy. You can see it. Looks pretty sturdy. Be pulled by a couple oxen usually like this. Imagine having a travel hundreds of miles, something like this. Here's a little miniature town square of Stony Brook, what it used to look like. A little toppings general store. Neat little things in here. Oval team. There's a horse. Another horse. They even have little bird noises and people talking in the background. Post office. <laughs> Pretty neat. Got a nice little atmosphere down here. Very nostalgic. Here's a Part close to the 1930s, 1920 road coach for people who weren't into automobiles. You can see one in the back there, people right in front. It's a picture of London though, not the United States. Well there you see those nice fancy lights. Probably the last versions of, of carriages before they were completely replaced by autos. Pretty comfortable, as long as it's not raining outside. 
Here's one from 1897. Here's some various ones from the early 20th century. Here's some neat fire engines. This one's from Patchogue. See? Town out on Long Island. Look up here, there's a house on fire. Pretty dangerous. No, this is wow, look at this one. Shiny. Zoom out here. This looks like a pretty heavy thing for a horse to be bringing around. Oh, steam pumper. 1874. This one's from Manchester, New Hampshire. And then we got an older one here. It's like 1807. Gooseneck Pumper. Huh. There's some old-time uniforms and hats. Stone. Cool. And over here. 1907. Popcorn wagon. Uh, I wonder how much popcorn this made over its lifetime. <laughs> oh, peanuts too. Here's 1890 grocery truck. It was the grocery truck of its day. It's pretty neat. Dump cart. 18 minutes. This had a lot of dirty stuff in it. Huh. Wonder how long it took them to clean. Nice leather seats on that one. It's a butcher's wagon, 1912. Look at that. Got the sausages ready to go. Gypsy wagon. Pretty fancy. Oh, look at those nice pictures. Here's a Concord stagecoach from 1866. It says it was meant to carry nine people. Can you imagine? Nine people in that. I see there's two seats on each of the sides and then the bigger seats on the ends so I wonder what side was four and what side was three. 
<laughs> Unless they count the seat up here as the nine. Here's one from all the way back to 1780. It's amazing they were able to restore it at all in that long period of time. It said it was owned by a revolutionary war hero. It's pretty cool. Gigantic wheels. It looks pretty comfortable on the inside. Here's a Crawford coach from 1867. It was meant to fit 20 people. Look at all those people in that picture. Here's the actual wagon. Look at that. Imagine it's a pretty bumpy ride. Here's the famous handsome cab used in the uh, urban areas because the driver sits up here, you get a really good view of everything around, all the obstacles to maneuver around. And he had a little lever that could open these doors for the passengers to come in and wouldn't have to get out. So it was uh, meant for busy city traffic, people in a hurry. Now I, I think my favorite part is this butt blocker here from the horse. <laughs> it just sticks out so you don't have to see the horse do his business while he's taking you around. Here's an interesting little chart shows exactly when motor vehicles outpaced horse-drawn vehicles. Looks like about 1915, but then it was up and down, up and down, but then the Depression came. Notice how it's 1931, uh, the year I argued the Depression really started, was when it hit bottom. And it went back up pretty rapidly, but horse-drawn carriages were pretty steady. They actually showed a little uptick around the time the uh, cars were at their low. Let me get a light here. So it was a little, because people were hard-pressed, they started going back to some horses. <laughs> That's interesting. They saw a little recovery in the early 20s, too. But what do you know? And then over here, we have a cool little setup of uh, what a carriage factory looked like. I believe uh, they don't have a show, but last time I was here, they said that this was taken, uh, most of the stuff was taken from a real carriage shop in New England and sort of reassembled here. I think we have Massachusetts. So I think it mostly all came from a, a actual shop. I guess it was somewhat preserved. They probably just uh, researched what it used to look like and put it back together. Even got wood shavings on it. Very authentic. This piece carriage museum is very nice. You know, very nicely set up, I should say. Here was the video that used to tell you about how they took it from Massachusetts and reassembled it, but unfortunately they don't let you watch it because of the pandemic. Just exited the carriage museum over here. 
Here's another part of the complex. The whole complex is called the Long Island Museum, but they said most of it's still closed because of COVID or something. I, I don't know. They have an art museum too, but that's not open. Uh, but this they have is a blacksmith shop restored, one that was right here on Long Island, Chautauqua, about a, a town over. And this shop, they said, was in operation until 1932. So this is a 1930s thing. Uh, the guy who ran it, they said, died in 1938. But he was a pretty famous uh, blacksmith in the area. Reached the height of his business in the early 20th uh, century. And they said people would come for miles around to see this guy because he was the best in the business. There's a picture of him there. There's a picture of the shop from the outside, what it used to look like. That's some pretty neat stuff. Workers table here. Look at that. It's got a horse hoof right there. <laughs> neat little machines. Stove to heat up the metal. Two of them. Over here are some tools. Lots of tools. That's a hoof nipper. Bet you didn't know that. <laughs> and look at this desk. Looks like it's been used quite a few times. Pretty cool stuff. I think I've said that a few times today. Here's a restored barn on the Long Island Museum property. It was built in 1794. And I have one neat little thing. Well, sort of neat. This little contraption here was a dog-powered churner. Here's the, the picture. The dog would go on there, and the wheel would <laughs> churn butter for you. I'm sure the dog didn't like it so much, but an interesting piece of machinery. <laughs> I'll conclude today's uh, two videos at this 1935 outhouse. That's right, it was built uh, in the 30s in Miller Place it's to the east of here a 10 miles or so and out in the country it was still common in the 30s to have outhouses that didn't have running water everywhere just in the more densely populated areas and the way outhouses would work is you dig a big cesspool pit underneath but it wouldn't last forever. Uh, eventually this, the cesspool would get full and they'd just dig a new cesspit somewhere else, usually far from the house. You don't want to be too close for sanitary reasons. And they would uh, just move the outhouse over a new cess pit, cesspool pit. So the outhouse got moved a lot. So I don't know. It doesn't say when they stopped using it, but there we go. That was life 84, 85 years ago. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. And in addition, um, I'm going to put links to Old Beth Page restoration site and the Long Island Museum down below if you want to check out the website, maybe visit for yourself. They're two uh, very interesting historical places, uh, two of my favorites. So uh, go take a look. Thanks for watching.